Amen. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. We thank you that you are so faithful to us. That you never leave us, you never forsake us. And though we fail you sometimes, you never fail. You are always the same, always faithful, always loving, always caring. And Father, we want to be more like you. So enlarge our capacity to love again, Jesus. In Jesus' name, may we be more like you, Jesus. That is our heart's desire. We want to be like you. So we say thank you this morning. The theme came through so strongly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are grateful, Father, that we are still standing in a time where so many are being taken out by the enemy. But you have allowed us to still breathe and still live in this land. And therefore, we know there is still a purpose. There is still a plan for our lives, Father. So we thank you. We thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We see the evidence of your goodness all over our lives. Just by the breath in our lungs, we know that you are good. We know that you are faithful. So thank you, Father, for providing for us, for caring for us, for sustaining us in these days. And we know that you are faithful and able to complete the work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, guys. How are you? Apparently, you're in for a treat this morning. Apparently. (laughs) You are. Amen. So this morning, I want to um, share a message with you that has been burdened on my heart this, this last week or so. And that is simply the title of the message is Take Back What the Enemy Has Stolen From You. Is, can any of you guys, re- <laughs> I'm laughing now because we live in South Africa. I was about to say, can any of you relate to having something stolen from you? <laughs> and we are, we are in a country where unfortunately, un- I think as a people, we've become so used to things being stolen from us. This is, this is the Lord speaking right now. Listen to this. We are so used to things being taken from us that we've accepted it as normal. Do you agree with me? In this country called South Africa, we have accepted theft, crime, and robbery as normal. We have news for you this morning. It is not normal for the kingdom of God. It is not normal for the children of God. The enemy is not, he's got no right. He's got no right over your life to come and steal anything from you. Amen. Amen. He cannot steal your children. He cannot steal your job. He cannot steal your finances. He cannot steal your life. He's got no authority over you. If you are born again, and I pray is everybody born again this morning, if you are born again, you stand in a position of righteousness. You stand in a position of the blood of the Lamb that overshadows you. He has no part over you. Amen. Do you remember the story of the zebra crossing? When there's a zebra crossing and you say in the name of Jesus, the enemy's got to stop. He can't come near you because you stand on a blood-stained way. Hallelujah. The other day I was driving again, I said, uh, and I had to brake literally for this lady jumping across the road. And I said, Alan, do you remember the blood-stained way? (laughs) It was such a reminder to me about how faithful God is when you say, in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you something? There is power in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I, I, I feel like I need to stress this point because I think we've, we've, we've missed the power of the name of Jesus. I said a few, I think it was last week or the week before, we don't negotiate with enemies. We don't negotiate with terrorists. When we say in the name of Jesus, we believe that it is done. Amen. We don't have to wrestle. We don't have to still struggle. In the name of Jesus, it is so. And I leave it at your feet, Jesus. That's, that's important as well right now. I don't know why I'm going down this, but this is important. If I say, well, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. I must believe that it is done. I, I can't sit day after day after day after day struggling with Wormy to get healed in the name of Jesus. And now, Jesus, it is your work to complete. Amen. I have sowed the seed in the name of Jesus. Father, you take over now. You see, because when I start wrestling now with this thing, my flesh starts to get involved. And the minute flesh comes in the way of God, he cannot move. Hallelujah. That's a key for somebody here this morning. Say in the name of Jesus and let it go. Say say with me, let it go. Release it. In Jesus' name, I know that you will do it. I know that you are able to complete the work. I release it in your hands, in Jesus' name. You heard Eleanor spoke a testimony this morning about trade mills. Trade mills that were, were restored to us that we didn't pay a cent for. 
that the Lord gave us these treadmills back, we just said, in Jesus' name, we cannot do this anymore. People were, uh, people were falling off the treadmills, to give you guys a bit of a background story. The treadmills were going so high, why are brand new, that they would, the, the treadmill was speeding up and people were dropping off the treadmills, nearly breaking their necks. And we said, in Jesus' name, you need to sort this out, Father, for us. The, the, tra- the, evidence, the evidence of His goodness is around us at the moment. God sorted it out. He turned us. Like where there seemed to be no way, God made a way. Take back what the enemy has stolen. Now, I want to ask you this question. I want to let you just ponder on this for a second. Is there anything in your life right now? Is there anything in your life right now that the enemy has stolen from you that you need back? Is there, <laughs> is there something that he's taken from you that you, you really need that back right now? And I, I really need that pot that you borrowed from me. <laughs> I know I borrowed you this pot. For, that was pot cost for you, yes. I really need that pot back right about now. <laughs> is there anybody like that? We need our things back. Now, this is what we're saying to the enemy. Enemy, in the name of Jesus, what the enemy has meant for evil, God is about to turn it. He's about to turn it. He's about to send it back home in Jesus' name. He's about to send it back your way. John 10 verse 10 says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if ever that, that words were more relevant, it's in the earth right now where we're sitting with a virus, where the, the enemy is coming to steal people's lives. He's coming to kill people's lives. He's coming to destroy households and families. That's what the enemy's goal and objective is. And unfortunately, at this stage, he's gaining ground. That We've got news for him this morning. But I come, Jesus says, I come to give you life and life in abundance, more abundantly. Say abundance with me. Now, I'm not a a prosperity teacher here this morning, but the word says to me, I am giving you life in abundance. That means there's no lack in your household, amen? That which the enemy has stolen from you, maybe finances, he's about to give it back to you in Jesus' name. We speak it in Jesus' name. So how this came about, uh, this message came about to me this, this week. I was so blown away by our outreach in Mediclinic a week ago. And those who went with us and those who may not have been with us but have seen the live stream, you will relate, when we walked into those halls, at, at first, and this is about God preparing a place for you, he's, ta- he's preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. I'm talking about death. Amen. So we went to the hospital we stood at the outside of the hospital and we started putting our guitars down on the outside. We started putting our speakers down on the outside and we were ready to go on the outside of the hospital. And we said, this is a nice spot. Truly, we said, this is quite a nice spot. We can play nice and loud here and sing out into the open air. And when the man came who prepared a place for us, he said to me, oh no, you are not called to be outside. I want you to come into the enemy's camp. <laughs> come inside. And I was a little bit taken back. I want you to come into death. I want you to come in where there is no more hope. I want you to come in where there is no more life. Hallelujah. And he prepared a place for us there. And you you will you will experience it, Brahm. You can testify, Marty can testify. When we stood there for the first minute or so, it was like there was this heaviness in the hallways of the hospital. There was this weight of a of of oppression over the hospital. But the minute we started to lift our voices in worship and in praise, the heaviness broke. I found it so difficult to sing. I said this to one of our friends, Alta. I said to us, I found it so difficult to sing because of the weight of God's presence that rested in that place. And the Lord was saying to me, I'm about to take back that which the enemy has stolen. The hospital is meant for recovery. Hallelujah. The hospital is not a grave site. The hospital is called for recoveries. And I am taking back this hospital. I will make it a recovery site. A restoration site. I'm talking about taking back what the enemy has stolen. Amen. Praise God. Are you excited about that? That hospitals will be a place where people go and have a, a holiday and come out and be refreshed in Jesus' name. That your, your loved ones may go into the hospital and say, they're going on holiday. 
They just want to get some bed and breakfast. They'll be out in a day or two. But at the moment when people go into hospital, there's a fear that grips us through, so we may never see them again. And we break, we curse that thought now in the name of Jesus, and we speak life over those who are there right now in Jesus' name. Hospital, you will be a stopover, and we will come back refreshed, those who go there in Jesus' name. We pray over the doctors and over the nurses and over the staff there that they may be used by you, Jesus. That it will be your hands and your words that speak over those patients in the name of Jesus. So, let me get on with the message. Take back what the enemy has told them. So, in 1 Samuel 27, we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 30. All right. We're talking about David. Let's read that first line in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 27. I just want to show you what, what David did here. So David was being chased by Saul, the king of the day, if you don't know that. And the word says, this is after David spared Saul's life yet again. Verse 27 says, but David thought to himself, one of these days I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. Now I want you to, to hear this. The word says, David thought to him. Self. That's, that's really important for you to, to grasp. David thought to himself. God didn't tell David. He thought to himself. All right? I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. So the best thing I can do now is to escape to the land of the enemy. <laughs> I need to escape to the land of the Philistines. Remember Goliath? Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in the land of Israel, and I will slip out of his hands. All right? So let's go on now to chapter 30. So to give you a little back background on the story, what happens in the next few chapters is, so David finds a home in enemy territory. And the Lord gave me a word. You guys, those of you who are with us here in the throne room, you can pay close attention to this word the Lord gave me. The Lord said to me, I am going to send you into enemy territory. I'm about to send you into enemy territory. But I'm not sending you there to, to, to build a dwelling place. I'm not, I'm not sending you there to go and blend in with the people. I'm sending you there to be a light. John chapter 1. I'm sending you to be a light in the darkness. You are there to change the atmosphere and take back what the enemy has stolen, and bring them back to the identity. So J David, the word says he stayed there for a year and four months. He was living in enemy territory, but he was favored, so he was blessed in that enemy's territory. But the word says, verse 29, chapter 29, where did I go? No, chapter 29, let me paraphrase a little bit for you, 28 and 29. Chapter 29, David goes and he is called to fight with the Philistines. You hear this? He's called to fight with the enemy against his people. There's a problem there. I am not called to fight my brother. I am not called to fight my sister. There cannot be a blessing when I fight Wilmy. I must stand with Wilmy. That's what the Lord's called me as brother and sister. Amen? Prophetically. Amen? I'm not called to fight her. I am called to stand with her. So the, he was in Philistine territory. The Philistines are going up against Saul and his men. And the Philistines said, since you're living here, since you are living here, I want you to fight with us against your people. There's a problem there. There's a distraction there. There's a lie of the enemy there. You are not called. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. So the next thing that happens is, the Philistine king sees that this is old David here, and he says, we can't go to battle with this guy. He was one of Saul's main men. In the battle, he will turn against us, and he will start fighting with his brothers against us. So I tell you what, send him back home. But David was already out of position. Say with me, out of position. He was out of position. He went in his own strength to a battle that was never meant to be his. You are in a foreign land fighting a fight that was not meant for you, David. So what happens? So, so let's, let's make a little demonstration here, right? So if I am, what's the best way to make a demonstration? We're playing a rugby match, all right? Brom and 
blow me. Come with us quickly. We're playing a rugby match quickly. And then I want Marty to be over there. So, Brown, you're on my team. Wom is on my team, and Elnor's on my team. Or, or Sean can just be over there if he wants to join the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brang, 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 brang. So, we've got this, uh, this rugby match going on, and we are passing the ball, and we are playing, and it's Sean's on our on kant, and on spiel. We're playing, 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 playing. And on the sideline, here's Wilmy. Marty, you're the only one of the fans, right? So this, this, you are, you are you're the opposition. You are the opposition on this team. And Marty said it's for Wilmy. All right, we're playing the rugby match here. We, we're trying to score the try. We're fighting. We're going on. And Marty says something nasty to Wilmy that Wilmy goes over to Marty. Marty, come here. So now Wilmy has left the team. I want you to see this. She's left the playing field in saying Marty, Strano Lekada. She's they are fighting it out on the sideline. We playing, we playing the, And I say, my distraction, I'm talking about distraction, my eye catches Wilmy saying, Hey, Wilmy's fighting, why is Wilmy fighting with Marty? And I say to my men, guys, let's go. Let's help Wilmy. The rugby match is continuing. The ball is in play. We are now fighting with Wilmy. <laughs> On Wilmy's battlefield, on Wilmy's little problem that she needs to solve. In the meantime, the opposition comes and says, and I thank you. There's the ball, and there's the try line. I'm strolling through into your house, and I'm going to score a try against you. I'm going to defeat you while you are busy with many things. Thank you, guys. That's what happened to David. David was, he left his home. He left his family. He left everything behind the place that his family was. He went and he pursued a battle that was not his. So what happened? Let's read in verse 1. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day, so he's on his way back after the Philistine king said to him, go home. And now the Amalekites had raided Negev and Ziklag. And they had attacked Ziklag where David was staying, his home, and burnt it. They had taken captive everyone innocent. I'm talking about little sheep. They took captive the woman and everyone in, else in it, both young and old. They took, they killed none of them but carried them off and on their way they went. So when David came back from fighting the battle against Marty, he eventually got back to the rugby field. David and his men reached home. They found that their home had been destroyed. By fire, their wives, sons, and daughters were taken captive. So the men started weeping until they had no more strength to weep. Can I say to somebody this morning, it's, it's your time of weeping is over. Your time of weeping is over. God is saying, the season of crying is over for you. Lift your head, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Joy cometh in the morning. Turn your eyes upon him now. The word says that they wept so much, they cried so much, until they had no more strength to weep. They had no more strength left into them. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? David's two wives had been captured. Verse 6. And David was greatly distressed because Bram Sean, <laughs> who had listened to Nathaniel to go to the battlefield, right? David was great. They were now talking about stoning poor Nathaniel. Because Nathaniel made an uninformed and an ungodly decision to go fight a fight with his men that he should never have gone and fought. So he was distressed because his men said, we're going to kill you, David. We followed you and you allowed our wives and children, everything we value, to be taken from us. But David found his strength in the Lord. And I love this about David, and that's why David is called a man after God's own heart. It is not because he's perfect. David's a man after God's heart, not because he's perfect, because he fails so many times. But as soon as he realizes his mistake, and this is a key for us as the people of the Lord, is turn back to God quickly. Say, Father, I apologize. I am sorry. You know what I learned out in my marriage, Wilmy? I learned in my marriage very early on, be quick to apologize. Don't you be the one, <laughs> you know, me and Eleanor had a heated argument about whatever it might be, Coca-Cola or Fanta. <laughs> Something small, right? And I said, I don't know, but Coke is better than Fanta. And she said, no, but I'm telling you now, Fanta is better than Coke. It's an irrelevant argument. 
it's a really irrelevant argument. I will make sure <laughs> that I humble myself <laughs> before my wife and I say to her, you know what, Eleanor? I agree with you. Fanta is better than Coke. <laughs> if you want to have a long marriage, be prepared to lose many battles. <laughs> Amen? Be okay to lose the fight. And you know what? There's peace in the house because it's irrelevant. It is an irrelevant battle. So David found his strength in the Lord. And he said to Abinadab, the priest, the son of Abimelech, bring me the ephod that I may inquire of God. I want to know his will for us. Verse 8, and David inquired of the Lord, Father, shall I pursue this raiding party and will I overtake them? So that's the important question. This is beautiful. It's the first time in a while that we see David going back to the Father and saying, Lord, what do you want from me? What do you need from me? I know I've messed up. I'm in this foreign land right now. My family's taken away from me. The enemy came in like a flood and stole everything. But I'm asking you now, I'm seeking your face. Will I overtake them if I pursue them? And the word came and said, you will certainly overtake them because you turned back to me. Is that not beautiful? Is that not a beautiful picture of, girl, of God's grace? Because you have turned back to me, you will have victory. Praise God. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. And David went. Look, I can go a, a lot longer. Do yourself a favor and read, read on in the story. David wins a mighty, mighty victory over these guys, the Amalekites. He grabs the plunder and then later on in the story, he shares the plunder with his brothers. He shares the spoils, even those who were weak, even those who were not fit for battle, he even shares with them. And that's a picture of God's kingdom, of brothers and sisters who will share with one another, especially in these times, of the spoils of victory. Amen. But now I want to take you to First Chronicles chapter 4, same principle. And this is what the Lord revealed to me here about God's people. First Chronicles chapter 4. Many of you guys will know the story about this man called Jabez in the Bible. And I want to talk to you a little bit about your, your identity and your uh, inheritance. Again, I say to you, is there anybody here who needs something back that the enemy stolen from you? And if I, ask, if I honestly ask myself, Lord, what, what is it that I need back? And I, I can see God restoring it in our household. It is faith. Restoring what the enemy has stole, stolen from us is faith. We are called to live a lifestyle of faith. But sometimes living that lifestyle of faith is not always fun. It is sometimes, it is sometimes going into a position of lack so that you can trust him. That's where faith is built up. Exceedingly it grows to us. Amen. So I'm asking God for my faith back and God is slowly restoring it. But what you need to understand here is I cannot, when we talk about going into enemy's territory, right, and taking back what the enemy stolen from me, I cannot go to the enemy if I don't know who I am. Amen? I, don't, I can't help Brahm if I can't help myself. That's what I'm saying to you. And that's why it's important for us to restore our identity as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? Once you've restored your identity, you can help somebody else in their identity. Amen. There's no point I've got issues and I can't deal with my friend's issues. So many times in the body of Christ, we, we've got so much issues ourselves, but I want to help everybody else. First, deal with your issues. Say, Father, I turn back to you like David did. I turn back to you if I've done every, anything wrong. Deal with me first that I may help my brother. So Jabez says this, verse 9 of First Chronicles chapter 4, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Some theologians say honorable is translated weighty in Hebrew. So it may have been that he was a big baby, and that's why his mother birthed him in pain. But he was more honorable than his brothers. We like that translation. His mother had named him Jabez, saying that I gave birth to him in pain. I gave birth to him in pain. Now, the Lord is saying this morning, some of you have taken on the name pain. Some of you have taken on the identity hurt. 
some of you have taken on the identity of worthless. So Jabez was called, his physical name was called pain. Can you imagine walking through the street and all they keep, I believe truly when you, when you name a child, when you give them a godly name, every time you say it over them, you're prophesying over them that name. That's why names are so important. So Jabez was, was saying, every time they call him, Jabez, come here. They were saying, pain, come here. Jabez, go there. Pain, go there. Pain, pain, pain. He was saying it over himself. But this man says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, just like David turned back to God and said, Oh Lord, that you would bless me. What he asked God to say is, Father, I know that they called me pain. I know that they called me hurt, but I'm asking you to call me blessing. Is that not powerful? Lord, that you would call me blessing, change my name and call me blessing. That you would bless me. Amen. So that when they call upon me and they say, let them say, blessing come here and blessing go there. That they will not say pain come here and pain go there, but let me be a storehouse of blessing. Amen. Oh Lord, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. That your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted him his request. Is that not beautiful of our God? Is when you turn back to God and say, Father, I need my faith back. <laughs> Father, I need my my humility back. Father, I need my, my, my song back. Often you'll find God says, all the time, in fact, not often, you'll say, you always say to you, I will grant your request. I will give you what your heart desires because you are noble in your question. So he said, change my name and I will call you blessing instead of pain. John 1, verse 12, verse 13. All who did not receive him, to those fall with those who did receive him to those who believed in the name of Jesus he has given the right to become children of God children born not of natural descent nor of human decision name of pain human's decision or husband's will but born of God you have a right you have an authority to go to your daddy to your heavenly father and say father I need a miracle father I need a breakthrough father I need you to come through for me Amen. And he will grant your request. Amen. Now for our mission, uh, throne room, are you ready? Our mission, our mission, Matthew eleven twenty eight. God is saying be flexible. Matthew 11, 28, it says, Come to me. This is us going into the enemy's territory, right? This is our mission. For this new season, we're going to go into the enemy's camp. We're going to go into the enemy's camp, and we're going to declare the goodness of the Lord, and we're going to become a light so bright that no darkness can stand in those places, and we're going to take back territory for God. So it says, this is your mission statement. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me. The yoke of the Lord is easy and light. The yoke of the enemy is heavy and it is hard on his people. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now Isaiah 9, we're closing with this one. Isaiah chapter 9. This is the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic word that the Lord has given me this week. Isaiah 9 verse 2. The people walking in darkness, they have seen a great light. You and me, look, look next to you and look at the person next to you and say, you are a great light. You are about to become a great light. You are about to expel darkness. Amen. The people walking in darkness, I'm talking about hospitals, I'm talking about prisons, I'm talking about schools, I'm talking about all places that should be godly places. The people walking in darkness will see a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Are you ready? 
You have enlarged the nation. Remember Jabez, enlarged my territory. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder just like David did. For as in the day of the Midian's defeat, you have been shattered the yoke that burdens, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. The bar that was across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor, you will set them free. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be des destined for burning and will be used for fuel of fire. But for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the greatness of his government. I'm talking about government right now. Authority and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on till forever. The zeal for the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. It will accomplish. Say with me, it will accomplish. It will accomplish. Every word that you have spoken, Father, we receive right now. And we receive the mandate this morning, Father, of going into enemy's territory. And we choose this morning, Father, to turn our eyes upon you. To fix our eyes upon you so that where distractions may come in, Father, that they will not distract us in Jesus' name. I pray right now, Father, and I'm burdened this morning to pray for identity. And just like Jabez, Father, ask you, Father, please change our name. Change my name from pain. I want to pray, Father, that your yoke will come upon your people. Your yoke that is easy and light. And that you will remove the yoke of the enemy, Father. That you will change your people's name from, from darkness into light. That you will change their name from pain into blessing in the name of Jesus. I pray for a restoration, Father. We pray right now, and as we pray, Father, we go into the enemy's camp and we say, give back what you have taken from your people. And restore the identity as the chosen generation. Your prized possessions. Your bride, Father God. We thank you that you have called us for such a time as this. To accomplish what you need us to accomplish. And we say, as Isaiah did, we will go, Father. Send us. We are ready. We are hungry. We are desperate to see your kingdom come on earth. In Jesus' name. I want to pray over families right now, Father, the blessing over them in Jesus' name. Over our children and over our workplaces. Over husbands and wives, Father. I pray that you will knit them together. Knit us together, Father. With cords that cannot be broken in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we love you with all of our heart. We thank you that you've already given us what the enemy has stolen from us. We receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good and for your glory. And even in the valley you are faithful, you're working for our good. You're working for our good and for your glory. Even what the enemy, is even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good and for your glory. And even in the valley you are faithful. You're working for our good. Yes, you're working for our good and for your glory. Amen. For your glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.